On this all-new spooky episode of Nightlife, we're bringing you all the magic from Halloween at the Magical Forest. Over two million lights. Oh man. All the decorations. Two million. It's just, it's, it's a, it is a community effort and it is a beautiful thing. And we sit down with Captain Mark Stone ahead of the Golden Knights matchup with the Ottawa Senators. Well, Mark, I wanted to ask you first how you would describe the kid who was drafted by the Ottawa Senators back in uh, 2010. Long and skinny, I guess, <laughs> is probably the way it is. Still the same height, but I think I was 180 pounds. Grown into my frame since then. Plus, all of the best action on the ice from this past week. And Pahal snaps it out, gave it to Weichel. Into the Calgary zone, drops it for Stone, and he scores! All of that and more. That red light is on, I should stop dancing. This week on Nightlife. edition of Nightlife coming at you from Halloween at the Magical Forest. And since we're embracing the Halloween spirit, it's been a scary good start to the season for Golden Knights captain Mark Stone. So we sat down with him to talk about his journey from Ottawa to Vegas and everywhere in between. Well, Mark, I wanted to ask you first how you would describe the kid who was drafted by the Ottawa Senators back in uh, 2010. Uh... Long and skinny, I guess, <laughs> is probably the way it is. Still the same height, but I think I was 180 pounds. So um, definitely grown into my frame since then. But uh, yeah, just uh, probably a kid that was just happy to be drafted. Uh, wasn't so sure I was going to uh, on that day. So just uh, was really happy. What do you remember about that moment? Um, I was at our family cottage uh, with my mom, dad, brother, and a buddy. And, I just remember my phone ringing with an area code I didn't recognize and um, was uh, actually Bob Lowe's from yep. uh, who's with us now so uh, he was the one that called me. What impact has he had on your career? Um, I think he went to bat for me to draft me, uh, went to bat for me to put resources towards me so uh, you know I think uh, when I was young um, a lot of people looked at me as not much of a player so and he saw uh, things that I could improve on. I think he really was just a guy that uh, forced the organization at the time to uh, put resources uh, to help me get better. What did you learn from him and what did he see in you? Um, I think he saw uh, that I was knew the game very well. I think he obviously had the relationship with Kelly who was coaching me at the time. Um, I think he saw there was flaws obviously, uh, not the most fleet of foot guy, but he just kind of encouraged me to uh, continue to get stronger, um, continue to, I guess, grow into more of a man than a boy, and uh, it ended up working out pretty good. Goal by Breer, only one given, that's by Moon. Ottawa breaks Stone, backhander scores! Mark Stone was on it. You talked about he could see that you knew the game. At what point in your career did you realize your hockey IQ was there and it was going to get you places? Um, I always uh, was a believer in myself uh, as a player. Um, even though I maybe wasn't the fastest guy on the ice, uh, I always knew I was smart enough to play the game. I knew I loved the game. Uh, I watch a lot of hockey, uh, student of the game, still am. So um, yeah, I think that's one of the main reasons. Go Knights, go! I'm not going to come in here and <laughs> try and be the guy. Uh, you know, I want to fit in. Um, I want to uh, help these guys win. Um, that's, that's, that's why I'm here. Number 61! How has your leadership style grown or evolved since coming to Vegas? You learn new things every year, right? Um, whether it's, uh, you know, first round exits, uh, missing the playoffs, uh, well, winning the Stanley Cup, there, there's different experiences along the way. Uh, unfortunately, even rehab uh, uh, is, has helped me, uh, like rehabbing has helped me to learn uh, how difficult that can be. Uh, so when other guys are going through it, uh, it for me now, it's try, try and help them because uh, I know it's, uh, it can be mentally draining. What about the way you've changed as a person? 
Not much. I think I'm still pretty similar, uh, other than the fact that uh, you know, married uh, with kid with kids now. Um, that's changed my life for, for the better, but uh, I don't think I've changed too much as a person. In what ways do you think fatherhood has changed you for the better? Probably a little bit more uh, happier, I guess, maybe after <laughs> after losses and stuff, because you can kind of come home and wake up the next morning and um, you know have a little tyke running around laughing and enjoying herself. So uh, I think that's made my life more enjoyable. The family's had a lot of stuff to smile about when it comes to your game to start the season. Has it felt as good as the numbers look for you personally? Yeah, I think our line has played some good hockey. We've also had some, some times where we haven't liked the way we've played. Obviously, that last road trip, we didn't uh, you know, kind of push the team over the top to, to get some wins, which is disappointing. Um, but overall, I think the team has, has played a lot of good hockey. So um, usually when the team's playing well, it leads to a lot of personal success for, uh, for everybody. What have you been most proud of about what you've done to this point? Winning, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, winning is probably the most proud thing uh, I've done so far. Winning a championship with uh, this organization in the city is the thing I'm most proud of. Mark, thank you so yeah. much for taking the time to do this and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Time for our first break here on Nightlife. Coming up next, the Golden Knights shock the Ottawa Senators late. Pearson starts it out with Kolasar and Houghton on the move. Pearson looking. Kolasar! Scores! Keegan Kolasar! And the Golden Knights have the lead! Five to four! And two quick strikes by the Golden Knights. They have a 5-4 lead here with just over two remaining in the third. You won't want to miss the thrilling comeback next right here on Nightline. Welcome back to this Halloween edition of Nightlife, where we're looking back at the Golden Knights game against the Ottawa Senators, which looked a little scary at first. But that's before we realized the boys in gold were dressing up as the comeback kid. Fantastic day. A lot of kids get to come to the ring today. Underway from T-Mobile Arena. Shot here from Gordon, and he scores on a bang-bang play. It's one nothing early. This shot blocked by Barber. Shed deflected, score. Put it between the pads of Hill, and it's 2-0 Ottawa. Hannafin keeps it in. Petrangelo. Pearson back to Wild and front scores! What a passing play! Nick Wild buries it! Tanner Pearson through the seam with a great feed to Nick Wild as he beats Allmark on the glove side, Wild's second of the year. And the Golden Knights get on the board, make it a 2 1 game. Hanks off the front and scores! Jake Sanderson and into the back of the net off his skate past Allmark. Hanks first of the year. To the red line. He'll chip it down to Tim Stutzel. Trying to cut outside in. McNabb gave it away. A Batherson scores. And it's 3 2 Senators. Hannafin, Petrangelo along. Rishon score! Ivan Barbershev on the deflection. Already up to six gets a stick on that shot to deflect it into the top corner blocker side. And the Golden Knights able to tie this at three. Stutzel on the move. Giroux feeds it, Gaudet walking in, scores! Adam Gaudet all alone right down Broadway. It's 4-3 Ottawa. We have penalty here on Ottawa. Piercing had wiped out. So great chance for Vegas. Ottawa penalty number 21. Two minutes for interference. Down to the final dozen seconds on the power play for Vegas. Michael holding, down low, Stone, the hurdle, scores! Tomas hurdle from Mark Stone to tie the game at four. Well, this is becoming a dangerous setup and play that has paid off for Vegas. Hurdle in that slot as Eichel rolls around the play off the goal line. Off the stick in a hurry, pass, pass, shot. 
to the back of the net as Hurdle goes five all between the pads of Allmark. And Hurdle ties it with his fourth of the year. Pearson starts it out with Kolasar and Houghton on the move. Pearson looking. Kolasar! Scores! Keegan Kolasar! And the Golden Knights have the lead! Five to four! Off the rush. What a shot by Keegan Kolasar! And two quick strikes by the Golden Knights. They have a 5 4 lead here with just over two remaining in the third. Up ahead, the stone. Eichel to Barbershop. There's an open net. Barbershop scores! His second of the game, seventh of the season. It's three straight goals in the third period for Vegas. 6 4 Golden Knights, your final. Oh, what a finish to this game for Vegas. What did this one tell you about this team and where you're at? Hey, if we can replicate what happened in the last, you know, 15 minutes of that game, we can go, we can go pretty far here. Congrats, Keegan. Thanks for that. Thank you. It's an exciting third period. It's Golden Knights. Sometimes it's just about finding a way to get across that finish line to pick up the two points, and they do it in regulation. Another win at home. Time for another break here on Nightlife. Coming up next. Have you ever looked at some of your favorite VGK players and thought they looked like a celebrity? Do you have a celebrity look-alike? A celebrity look-alike? That's a tough one. Well, they all have their celebrity look-alikes. Uh, a lot of people mistake me for Brooks Kepka. He shoots one good round and he thinks he's Brooks Kepka. <laughs> Next, right here on Nightlife. Welcome back to Nightlife from Halloween at the Magical Forest, where we are now joined by Heather Davis, the Director of Community Engagement. First and foremost, incredible setup that you have here. How would you describe everything that happens here at the Magical Forest? Uh, really Las Vegas. This is Las Vegas community. This would not happen without Las Vegas community caring about our most vulnerable population, which is the adults that live among us with disabilities. We definitely want to talk about Opportunity and Village and yeah. how they help that entire community. What about the Halloween aspect? Okay. What is the setup? What does it include? All right, this is a two and a half acre uh, themed park, obviously Halloween themed. Um, it includes carnival rides, carnival games, treats and eats, so all the carnival food you can imagine, and just a real fun holiday spirit. Definitely have trick-or-treating, because you yeah. can't have Halloween without trick-or-treating. Obviously. Yes. What is your favorite part of this setup? Probably the little kids that come running in so excited, I mean, with their costumes, ready to, oh, a little girl today told me she dreamed about coming here last night. Oh <laughs> my goodness. she was goodness. so excited. And I bet it's even better than her dreams. That's the best part. Uh, it has to be. Yes, yeah, I have no doubt. And let's talk about um, who this benefits. What is your mission? So, Opportunity Village, we empower, employ, and support adults with disabilities that live here in our valley. And so all the money raised here goes directly to that. So whether it's day habilitation, whether it's workplace development, um, direct employment, housing, social activities, all this money goes to really help those who are our most vulnerable. And so many volunteers here really tells yeah. you something about how much the community is willing to give back. You know, the Las Vegas community is wonderful to our population that we serve, and it's just, it's a beautiful thing. We couldn't run this. We use up to 200 volunteers a night. Uh, tonight we have, I just finished the count, 153. Impressive. Yeah. Yeah, and you're continuing to expand a new location, new campus? Yes, up off the 215 and Decatur. So right up in that area, we have uh, right, over, right over 17 acres, our northwest campus. It is going to have over 100 residential, one, two, three, four bedroom homes. Um, independent living for persons with and without disabilities. And then it's going to also offer all of our program services. It'll take about five years to complete in full, um, but we just broke ground, so it's super exciting. Well, congratulations on that. I'm sure this setup goes a long way in you know, helping get that off the ground, but it's not only Halloween. You do this for other holidays as well. The day after Halloween, November 1st, we flip the forest. The community comes in once again, and we have about two weeks that all the Halloween comes down, all the holidays come up, and it becomes the magical forest. How many lights? 
over 2 million lights, two million. over 400 decorated trees, and just a whole bunch of just amazing Las Vegas strong spirit. Yeah, incredible. Can't wait yeah. for that. But we are still embracing Halloween for just yes. a little bit longer for some Golden Knights. Dressing up might be a little bit easier than others. We talked to the UGK about their celebrity lookalikes. You have a celebrity look-alike. Celebrity look-alike. I don't. I don't know if I do. Uh, for a look-alike, mm -hmm. that's a tough one. I mean, that looks like you might have one that you're afraid here to there, say. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah. People have told me, yeah. So you've been thinking about this. Did not, someone? Did someone really. flip you these questions? Not really. <laughs> Sometimes they, they've said that I look like Charlie Hunnam. Okay. Which is a very good one. Sons of That's a great compliment to Carl. <laughs> that guy's the man. That's pretty, yeah. I think he's a very cool looking dude. Killian Murphy, they say, who plays in Peaky Blinders. I could see that, that, that sure. That's the guy they've been telling me. Uh, a lot of people mistake me for Brooks Kepka. He's a big golfer, so I'm yeah. sure he would love if he got recognized like that, yeah. He shoots one good round, and he thinks he's Brooks Kepka. <laughs> That's him not looking for golf compliments, that's all. I mean, my wife sometimes says she thinks I look like Andy Samberg. Okay. But I, can see um, it. I think that's when my hair's uh, a little bit longer. When I was younger, like Nathan Scott. From One Tree Hill. Yeah, when I was really young. I can see it. For some reason, everybody was calling me Max Verstappen in last year. And, you know, it just kept going, so. It makes sense. Yeah. We'll start calling you Max. <laughs> You get Justin Bieber, do you not? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't know. I, I, sometimes I feel like the guys are just like messing with me, but I've also had someone say that I look the guy from Mamma Mia. Is it the second one when they're younger? Do any of my teammates have celebrity lookalikes that come to mind? Car Carly kind of looks like uh, maybe Carly with Thor. Oh, I feel like he looks like him. Actually, people have said Chris Hemsworth from Thor. On me? On you. No. no. <laughs> that guy's perfect, yeah. You're blushing over yeah, here. Yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> but he looks like a lot of Viking stuff. Yeah. Because you know, <laughs> yeah. of his flow. So I'll take those. I mean, I'll take it. Because people are also comparing him to Chris Hemsworth. Carl to Chris Hemsworth? Yes. This is a great day Well, for because Carl. of Thor. Holy yeah, smokes. people are really pumping his tires there. Time for our last break here on Night. Coming up next, we relive the offensive explosion. Colasar to Wah, here they come again. Wah looking, cuts it in the middle, his shot, score! Nick Wah buries it! And the Golden Knights with two quick ones, 50 seconds apart. Keep it locked. Nightlife on Scripps Sports will be right back. <laughs> Life, where we might be embracing the jack-o'-lanterns and the ghosts, but have no fear, because thanks to a shiny new extension, Shea Theater is here to stay for seven more years. My game day routine has been has been pretty solid. Um, I think, uh, I mean, Big Wes has been, he's been napping quite a bit also, so kind of hopping on the, the game day nap train, but, um, you know, my wife has done a great job. And you had him at the game the other day? Yeah, his first game, you know, he, uh, he got his jersey, you know, went home with a game puck, so I think, I think he was pretty pretty happy with that. We're kind of talking about um, when we were kind of came to a decision on us kind of wanting to stay and kind of going through contract stuff, but, yeah. um, you know, I just, I, I love everything about being down here, and um, we've kind of been down here for the season and for most of the summers the past couple years and um, you know it's just it's just a great spot to live. Yeah I'm having a lot of fun. I think uh, being off to a good start with the team is always is always key. Um, you know I think just just enjoying being a new dad there's a lot of a lot of new things going on in my life right now and um, you know just enjoying a lot of it. What do I think about Calgary? Yeah. Uh, normally just hard just hard no is like they always seem to finish finish their checks, and um, you know there's not a lot of east-west. It seems like they dump the puck in a lot. So, you know, as a D-man, you know you don't you're gonna have to get back quick and get the puck, or you know somebody's gonna 
kind of pin you up against the glass. So yeah, it's just we're, we're in for a hard game, but uh, you know I think our team is also built for that and um, kind of expect it. So. On the Golden Knights, they have been dynamite in this building so far this year, Shane. Of course, they sweep the three-game homestand to start the year, dominate San Jose here in their last game. Now they try to sweep this four-game homestand tonight. Carlson digs it out on the corner. Off to Holtz, wide open, Petrangelo with a chance, and he scores! Alex Petrangelo's first of the season gives the Golden Knights the one nothing lead. And Pahal snaps it out, gave it to Eichel. Into the Calgary zone, drops it for Stone, and he scores! The Golden Knights take advantage of the turnover, and Mark Stone rips it home. It's 2 0 Vegas. Schwint up ice. Schwint feeds it in front. Colasar scores on the deflection. Nice set up by Cole Schwint from the right wing boards. Eldon Vizeri worked his way up ice. Wah with a steal. Right back he comes. Wah looking to Colasar, he scores! Great work by Nick Wah to set up Keegan Colasar. His second of the period to make it 4 0. Colasar to Wah, here they come again. Wah looking, cuts it in the middle. His shot, score! Nick Wah buries it. And the Golden Knights with two quick ones, 15 seconds apart. Golden Knights remain perfect at home. 7-0 in the Fortress. Shutting out Calgary 5-0. Well, that does it for this episode of Nightlife. A huge thank you to everyone at Opportunity Village for having us out here to Halloween at the Magical Forest. We'll see you next week, though, so maybe save some of that candy for your watch parties.